Hey friends, I'm Jill with Whispering Willow Farm, author of the book, The Tiny But Mighty Farm, and today's video is gonna be all about learning how to thin your fall seedlings. Although I'm outside and I'm sweating, fall is approaching, and if I wanna have a successful fall garden, I need to be thinking about that fall garden right now towards the end of summer. So I'm gonna share with you guys today how I go through and thin my seedlings. Um, but even if you are not starting your own seeds for your fall garden, say maybe you're buying transplants, this can also also be something that you can do. I actually put out a video last year how to shop for transplants. You can find it up here, but a lot of times you can buy transplants that have more than one plant in them, and you can bring them home and thin them and separate them and then get two plants for the price of one. I do start the majority of my things here on the farm, and most of our brassicas I heavy seed and just go back in and thin out, especially if the seeds are maybe older. So one of the reasons you'd want to multi-sow is if you are unaware of when those seeds were purchased and you're afraid that the germination is going to go low. So for me personally, my brassicas are just one of those things. I usually throw in two to three seeds just to make sure something sprouts because it is such a shorter window um, to make sure that I have successful germination with those. So it's super easy to do and I hope that this shows you whether you're starting seeds or buying transplants how to thin out your seedlings for a successful fall garden. Aside from teaching you guys today how to thin out your seedlings, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because you guys know if you've been following us for any period of time we have done multiple collaborations with Bootstrap Farmer. We love those guys. We've done seasonal launches of pots and we have another fun collaboration announcement today that's going to happen in this video so make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Alright so before I dive into the nitty gritty and the how to thin your seedlings let's talk about why it's crucial that you go in and you thin your seedlings. Now whether you are growing a fall garden or a spring garden all the same essentials apply as far as why it's important. Um, I know not everyone grows a fall garden and I'm on a mission to change that, but even if you are just kind of spending this fall season really educating yourself for that spring and summer garden and you're starting seeds or even if you're buying seeds, this is all still going to apply. And so one of the reasons that it's really important to thin your seedlings is that you're avoiding competition for soil nutrients. So this here is a two inch pot and I have got three little seedlings in here. So I planted three and it looks like all three sprouted which is great and these still look pretty healthy but what's going to happen is as these plants continue to grow they're going to start fighting for nutrients and there's not going to be enough soil nutrients in this two inch pot to grow a really really healthy plant not one time, not two times, but three times. It's going to run out of nutrients to really start to cater for those plants specifically. So that's really important on why you need to thin them. Another reason is just to prevent disease. So one, it's really important when you're starting your seedlings, whether you're starting them indoors with just like grow lights, or maybe if you're out in a greenhouse or something like that, you wanna provide good airflow because this is going to one, strengthen your seedlings. Like you can see the winds blowing here, it's really making them just establish a deep root system and just be a sturdy plant, but it's also adding airflow, air circulation, which is going to prevent and reduce your disease. Now, if I were to keep all three of these and they continue to grow, they're gonna get really crowded and there's not gonna be good air circulation. Even if I provided a fan, it's still probably not gonna be enough to prevent disease. So it's really important to make sure that you're going in and thinning that out so that you're just really setting your little seedling up to be the best sturdiest plant before it makes its way out into the garden. The third reason why it's important to thin your seedling is just the quality of the plant, kind of like what I just talked about. You don't wanna spend all your time, energy, and resources and making sure you have high quality soil, making sure you have high quality seeds, getting all your supplies, and doing everything that it takes to start a garden from seed to just have a puny transplant that ends up dying by the time you throw it out into the garden because it really wasn't nurtured well in this seedling stage. And so really how to set yourself up for success is make sure you have quality you know, soil, make sure that you are thinning them out, make sure you're doing everything to prevent disease and just you know, making sure you have the best quality transplant by the time it goes out into the garden. All right, so now let's jump into the step-by-step -step how to thin your seedlings. You are gonna need some pruning shears. I have about a 
thousand pruners and I'm not even lying and I, for some reason I could not find any of them so I've just got some kitchen shears which will work as well um, and really it kind of depends I'm going to show you two different methods to thinning out your seedlings okay one you can do it when they're really small and you're just going to cut at the soil surface which will show but then I'm going to also show you how to separate them that way if you do have you know more than one seedling that sprouted and it looks really good you can go ahead and just make another plant out of it if you want to that way you're not wasting that. So you're going to go through and look for your strongest seedlings. So I have got an entire tray of seedlings here and you can see most of these need to be thinned out. And so I'm going to go through, I'm going to look for, you know, my really strong seedlings. If I see any that have a, any sort of disease, I am going to go ahead and cut those out and remove them. I'm not going to try to separate them or anything like that. So that's going to be the first thing is just really assessing your seedlings and your plants. The next thing is to make sure that you have watered them well. And you want to do this process early in the morning, later in the evening, especially if your plants are outside. If you are doing this and you're just taking them back inside, which I am, all of my seedlings are under grow lights right now they aren't you know as finicky um, they aren't going to go into shock as much so if it is hot where you are your seedlings are going to be outside in a greenhouse make sure you're doing it early in the morning later in the evening and make sure you're watering them well so that they're hydrated the idea is to just not shock them so much that they can't bounce back from that and so I'm just going to go through I'm going to find a couple seedlings we can do as a demonstration and show you what to do all right, so if your plan is to cut the seedling out, you want to go in and find the strongest one, which we just talked about. This one ended up breaking off some leaves. It just wasn't super, super sturdy. So you're gonna take your pruners, your kitchen scissors, your shears or whatever, and you're gonna just go right to the base. And what you're gonna do at this point is just cut directly at the base. You can save these and eat them as microgreens, toss them on a salad, something like that. But now you can see here, it is just going to die off because I've cut off what the root supply is actually trying to grow and, and die. And then it will just worry about trying to nurture and grow this one seedling. Now the reason that's so important to cut and not pull is because let's say we've got this one. If I were to pull this one up and you can see these are pretty close in proximity, it is going to disturb the root system of the seedling I'm trying to keep. And sometimes it disturbs it so much that it won't actually rebound from that. So it's always a good idea to cut and not pull. That's just something to always kind of keep in your mind. Cut at the baseline. That way you're not disrupting the root systems of the seedling you're actually trying to nurture and keep to grow but let's say that you have a couple decent ones I'll grab let's see here let me see so let's say over here these are pretty all right I've got three in here what if I want to actually separate these um, one it's a great way to kind of prevent using a ton of pots to begin with and then just up potting later so what you're gonna do at this point is just gently squeeze your uh, seedlings out of the container that they're in so you can see I'm kind of just squishing the sides here gently pulling out there's a great root system on there check that out and then I'm just going to very very gently with my fingers start to separate you can see they fall apart great so now I've got one plant here that I can put in a pot and over here the two that are a bit closer together the idea is you're not pulling or tugging you are just gently letting them fall apart and thankfully, these all have really decent root systems. So that's got a great root system. This one. So had I left all three of those in this two inch pot, they would have not survived. They would have fought for nutrients. They would have overcrowded each other, caused disease. But now I can take those three. I can separate them and pop them each into their own two and a half inch pot with some good quality soil. And now I have got three plants. So I love doing that. And it really is that simple. That is also what you would do if you were buying transplants and there were multiples in there. You would just go in, you would pop that uh, plant out of whatever container it was in and just gently separate it. Don't pull, try not to be harsh. When you think about the root systems as kind of the life and longevity of the plant, you want to be really tender and careful with those. And so I have got a ton of these to do, but I wanted to show you if you are starting your seeds, 
how easy it is to thin these and just really why it is so important to thin them. Um, and so these are all of my brassicas. There are some things that you can just go in and direct seed for the fall. You wouldn't actually have to start. And so that's good to know too. All your root vegetables, you can go in, but the same concept applies. Say maybe you are seeding carrots and you like to sow a lot and make sure you have good germination you can go back through and thin them and in that case you would take your pruners or your shears you would just cut at the baseline to make sure that you're going to have a sizable carrot or beet or radish and so this can apply depending on what you're growing whether you are direct seeding or you are just thinning these out when they are in the little transplant stage but i hope this was helpful and showed you how easy it was and encouraged you to start a fall garden if you haven't already but now i'm going to show Share with you guys the fun announcement I promised you at the beginning of this. These are not just any pots. These are the Whispering Willow Signature Collection. So if you've followed us for a while, we've been doing seasonal launches with Bootstrap Farmer for a while now. Uh, Bootstrap Farmer's just been a really, really cool company. We've gotten to know, I've went to their facilities and toured them. I've went to the Midwest and made my own pots and that's just been really, really cool and really special to offer that. But up until this point, we've only done seasonal launches, meaning we do a limited run of a really fun color and when it sells out, it sells out. You never get that pot again. Well, we decided that Whispering Willow Farm should have a signature collection of colors that is always available. It never runs out. We still will do our seasonal launches full of fun colors, but I am happy to share with you guys my signature collection. We've been working on this project for over six months, choosing the colors, making sure it really just fit and resonated with what I wanted to um, share with my audience and the great thing is too is that these are going to be available in multiple sizes So up until this point anytime we've done a collaboration It's only been the two inch pots now You're gonna be able to buy these in the two inch the six cells the four inch and so on So we've got all of these fun colors this one. We're calling crazy anthem Look how fun this is we've got a pewter Try not to drop these so, so much goodness. This was so fun. This was so fun. I love that these are always gonna be available and a resource for you guys. So if you are interested in snagging the signature Whispering Willow Farm collection, there will be a link down in the description below. But I'm excited and they're durable, made in the USA. We love partnering with Bootstrap. It's just, they're fun people to work with, right? And those are the kind of people you wanna surround yourself with and partner with are the good ones. So if you like what you see here, all of this goodness, make sure you go check out the link in my description. I hope that this educated you guys if you were wondering or curious on how to thin out your seedlings. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to them. But thank you for hanging out with me. Happy Friday and I hope you guys have such a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to y'all soon.